Hey everyone, we are live from Hyde Music in Appleton, Wisconsin. I'm Matt Geeky, and I'm here with uh, Stacy Jewell today from the Appleton Area School District. Uh, she is going to have some fun with you with her favorite instrument, All right. the clarinet. So everyone, Stacy Jewell. All right. Well, first of all, you have made a fabulous choice, all of you clarinet players. This clarinet is clearly the best instrument in the band, and um, uh, even Matt, uh, who plays percussion, knows that clarinet is the best instrument in the band. <laughs> but more importantly than clarinet, you've made a great choice in being in the band, so hey, all things are good. So I'm going to take you through some, um, I'm, I'm calling them levels today. We're going to start with some real basic, easy stuff, and then we're going to kind of work our way up to more difficult things. Um, if you want, if you're a Star Wars fan, you can sort of think about it as levels of Jedi training. So we're going to start off at the youngling stage and we're going to work our way up to Jedi Knight here. So uh, first thing, putting your instrument together. I'm sure at this point you've all put your instrument together unless you're a brand new beginner starting off this summer. But most of us have put an instrument together. But I do want to mention a few important things that sometimes we forget about putting a clarinet together. First of all, these middle two joints are the most important thing that you have to get right or your clarinet's not going to work, especially when you start adding your right hand. Um, if you don't have the parts together correct, you're going to have troubles. So in order to do this, remember that this key has to be moved up. So I control that on the front by one of my um, keys down there. I push that up before I twist it together. And you have to make sure that it is exactly in line. So don't have it kitty wampus to one side or the other. That's not going to work for you. As you get into the higher notes that we're going to learn later on, it's important that it's completely lined up. Okay. Some other things to uh, keep in mind um, when your reed gets put on. Now, I soaked my reed earlier and I put it on my mouthpiece so I can warm up. Um, I've got it on there so that it's almost to the top. You have just a little sliver of black showing. If it's too far down or if it's way up above your mouthpiece, that's also going to give you trouble. All right. Um, oh, one thing that a lot of students ask me is, what is my mouthpiece cap for? I mean, this is a, what in the world am I supposed to do with it? <laughs> and, you know, if you're walking just from your band locker to your seat, you're probably okay without your mouthpiece cap on. But the cap is really there to protect your read when you're walking around. I know a lot of my students, my middle school students, when we go to solo and ensemble, I always tell them, if you're walking around the halls, put your mouthpiece cap on. It's going to save your reads. The worst thing is when you have an awesome read and you split it in half by bumping into something or you crack it or whatever. Gosh, that's disappointing. So use your mouthpiece cap. Um, another big important thing to keep in mind and this is probably the worst student uh, things that students do. When you are done playing your clarinet, take your reed off the mouthpiece, all the way off, and store it in its little reed case. Okay? Don't leave it on the mouthpiece. I can tell you some very disgusting stories of what I've seen clarinet mouthpieces look like after reeds have been left on for days and weeks and yuck. <clears throat> All right. Oh, one last thing I do want to talk about. I'm not going to actually do it, but I just want to mention at the end, when you're done playing your clarinet, always make sure to swab it. I know it's a bummer because clarinet, we have the most pieces to take apart in the band. Everybody else is off to lunch already and you're still sitting in your seat trying to swab your instrument. Do it anyway, though. It's going to save you and your parents so much money if they don't have to come in and have pads repaired. And when you do swab out your instrument, always go from this end. Okay, sometimes I see students trying to go from the mouthpiece. That's not great. There's one spot in your clarinet where there's actually a piece of tubing that goes into the open part, and your swab is much more likely to get stuck there if you go from the wrong direction. So swab from the bottom. Everybody will thank you including your friendly high music repair person. <laughs> All right, so let's move on. Next thing, how um, forming an amateur, some tips and tricks for clarinet amateur. Now, amateur is just a fancy word for how we make, how we do our face. 
when we play clarinet. And you have to think about having a flat chin. Okay, so not one stuff. Flat chin and your bottom lip is nice and firm. And so once I get that nice and firm, I put I read on my lip and then my teeth are going to come down on top of the mouthpiece. And then I'm actually taking my right thumb and I'm pushing my clarinet a little bit up into my upper teeth so that it's firm there. If I was a teacher, and I do this to my clarinet students sometimes, I would come by and I would try and wiggle your barrel and I shouldn't be able to wiggle my bar your barrel if you've got your clarinet in firm enough. Now, some people don't like biting down on a hard mouthpiece, so I'm a big fan. It's probably pretty hard to see on camera here. I've got a little um, black pad on top of my mouthpiece. It's just kind of a cushion for my teeth, and something you can get at the music store. And you, you know, a whole pack of them only costs a few dollars. And I really like those, and I give a lot away to my students because suddenly they have a, something for their teeth to grip into, and it doesn't feel so uh, strange to them. Another thing you can do as far as, you know, holding and, you know, your thumb is supposed to be pushing up, you can get a, you know, padded area for your thumb rest. Lots of students have that. I actually use a neck strap when I play. I know we're used to seeing saxophone players play with a neck strap, but clarinet players can too. Um, and there's different kind of neck straps depending on what type of thumb piece you have on your clarinet. Um, mine happens to be just a simple elastic one. I know others, especially on newer model clarinets, are fancy. There's actually a place for a hooked neck strap to go in there. So that's an option as well. I really like it because, I mean, <clears throat> it helps me hold the clarinet without having to actually hold the weight of it. The weight is held on my neck strap, and then my thumb is just free to guide the instrument into my face like it's supposed to be. <clears throat> All right. So hand position. Hey, when you're holding your clarinet, some things to keep in mind. Notice that my fingers are slightly tilted downward. Okay, they're not straight across. That's going to cause all kinds of problems because you can't reach the keys like you're supposed to. So you need to hold them so it's slightly down. My thumb on the back is, if you pretend that this is a clock face, my thumb is pointed to like one or two o'clock on the back of the instrument. That's super important as well. Because later on, when we go to use our register keys, you need to be able to reach that while you keep this hole covered. So you've got to do double duty so it needs to be in the right spot. Okay, let's actually play. So hopefully you've got your clarinets out now. They're put together. You're ready to roll. And we're going to start with um, the first line of the treble staff. We know that's E. Every good boy does fine. So E is your thumb is pushed down, covering the hole, and your first finger is pushed down. Now, what do you do with the rest of your fingers? You keep them hovering over the keys. You don't want them flying out because then when you have to switch fingers, it makes it so much harder on yourself. If you ever watched a pro player of any instrument play, it looks like their fingers are barely moving, even though the notes are flying by. It's because their fingers are so close to the keys. They're really being efficient in how they do their finger movements. So I think about if I'm, not, if I'm not covering the hole, I've got my fingers hovering over the holes. Okay, so we are going to play our bottom line E and let's play um, some whole notes here. I'm going to start my metronome. Okay, so whole notes, four beats, and then we'll take four off, and then we'll go four beats again. One, two, here's E, ready, go. Another one, go. Take it off the top, here, big sound. Remember to kind of push your clarinet gently into your upper teeth to keep a firm grip so you don't have a wiggly barrel. Okay, so 
Those are all things that are going to help you get a nice sound. And then, of course, I know I said it right before we started, but the air is so important. We are wind instruments. We need to use the wind or our air to be able to play the clarinet. You don't use this much air to talk to your friend next door. Um, you've got to, you know, it's sort of like sometimes I tell students, it's like blowing out a birthday candle that's across the street or making the leaves on a tree um, in the next driveway, you know, move in the wind. You've got to use that sort of directional air to make clarinet work well. All right, we're going to stick with E uh, a little bit longer and we're going to talk about tonguing on clarinet. So tonguing is an articulation. There are different kinds of articulations. And articulation is the fancy word that means how the note starts. So the articulation that we always start with on any wind instrument is called tonguing. And when you're tonguing, your tongue is touching the reed right up here at the tip. And think about using one taste bud. I mean, I know that's kind of silly. You wouldn't, you know, you can't possibly touch the reed with just one taste bud. But think about it that way. Because you don't want to smack your whole tongue on there. That's not going to work so well. Um, but if you gently tongue and then pull your tongue back, you'll get some really nice starting sounds. All right, we're going to go back to our E. This time, rather than a whole note, or actually, let's do it this way. Let's do a whole note. And then we'll do four quarter notes right after it. So whole note E, four beats, and then four quarters afterwards, make sure we tongue each one. Okay, here we go, and one, two, and ready, and breathe. sound good right away because so many beginners don't know how to tongue because of course we've never used our muscles that way before but once you can articulate all of a sudden your sound you know gets so much better so keep that in mind all right we're going to level up here okay a few jedis are out there keeping track we're moving up to padawan level now so we're going to move we're going to change some notes we know how to hold it we know how to play an e um, we know how to blow, we know how to tongue. So moving on up, let's learn a few more notes. So we've got our E that we did before, thumb and first finger. We're gonna add one more finger, and this is D, okay? So if you think about, if you ever played recorder in general music class, you know that the more fingers you add, the lower the sound is gonna be, because we're closing up the holes on the tube forcing the air to go farther. There's a little physics lesson for you. See, music is science. And when we count, it's math. So, you know, we do all kinds of great things in music class. So we're gonna add one more finger to D, and then we're gonna add another finger to C. All right, we're gonna do this I play, you play style. So I will play it, I'm gonna play a whole note E, and then a whole note D, and then a whole note C. I'll do it once, and you can listen to me demonstrate. And then I'll do it a second time, and that's your cue to join in. Here we go. I play, you play, ready, begin. Time, I'll play it, and then whatever I do, you play it back to me. Okay, 
go E, D first. One, two, I play first. Here I go. Now you, E, D, good back again. Now you, E, D, good. Now we're going to go E, D, C. You all start. Here I go. Every beginning band student's favorite song, right? It's Hot Cross Buns, E, D, C. <clears throat> okay, so let's do it together. And I don't have any music here. And you, if you don't either, it doesn't matter. We can still do it. We'll go E, D, C, and I'll stop and then I'll give you the next notes. Just play along with me. Here we go. Two, start on E, go. <laughs> favorite beginner band songs. It only needs four notes, so we gotta learn one more. So four notes here, and this is a perfect song for learning uh, to practice our tonguing, okay? So we're gonna start on D, or excuse me, C. So that's thumb and three fingers down. We're gonna go from C, up one finger to D, and then we're gonna go up two fingers to what we call F. F is just your thumb on the back, all right? So let's practice each one of those. Here's C first, three fingers down. Now D. Now F. Let's do it again. C, D, F. All right, now unplay it once, and then you play it along with me. Here we go. One and two. Ready? I go. Just walk it up. We'll do C, D, E, F, and G. Here we go.
Sunday is him. And him, you could do a Google five minute song and you might come up with a whole bunch of them. Um, all right, now let's go to the next note after that. And this one's a little bit special of the way we have to play it. It's A. Now on clarinet, the A key is right here at the top. Okay? And the special way we have to play E, excuse me, A, is that we can't lift our finger and put it down on A. That doesn't work because when you're trying to switch back and forth from A to a different note, you're going to have problems if you pick it up, put it down. You want to roll into it slightly. Okay? So I'm actually playing A with the side of my finger. That's the part of my finger that's touching that A key. Okay, so I'm going G and then I'm rolling up to A. In fact, an even better exercise is if we start on our E and then we roll up slightly to A. E to A. All right, let's do that a couple times together. Let's go a little slower. Um, Let's go whole notes, four beats each. Start on E, then A, here we go. Good, one more time, set your fingers, start on E. Good, now we're going from E to A, back to E. Okay, so we're going to go up and then back out again. So if you hear that happen, and it happens to all of us, even me, after 30 some years playing clarinet, I still squeak sometimes. So don't feel bad about it. It's just something that happens. We get better as we as we learn. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got that A along with our other notes. So that means we can play another beginning band greatest hits, Twinkle Twinkle. And I think what we'll do with this one, Matt, is that we will we'll start. There's, there's a three lines of music for Twinkle Twinkle. And you can just follow along with me, and uh, that's going to be my sound or my visual engineer and change the slides. So you can just read along. The music will go on your screen as we go. All right, twinkle two. Here we go. <laughs> Some people don't like it because it 
forces you to keep going. But that's why it's so great. It forces you to keep going. Even if you trip up and make a mistake, you got to keep moving along. So if you think about um, when you're in a full band situation, if you personally make a mistake, the band doesn't stop for you. You just kind of have to recover and jump back in. Now, of course, we don't want to practice mistakes over and over again. So, you know, what I'll do is if I'm practicing personally, um, it kind of depends on how I'm practicing. If I'm looking for problem spots and just repeating, or I call repping, repping my problem spots, that's one type of practice that I do. And, you know, and then I will stop when I make those mistakes and try and slow it down or figure out why it's not working. If I need to try a different fingering or something, that's going to be better. If I need to count the rhythms first to make sure I'm playing my rhythms right before I play again. So that's one type of practice where you do stop and you work on all those little details. But then the other type of practice is, you know, play beginning to end and work on, you know, trying to keep yourself going. And that's where a metronome is super handy. Okay, let's, I think we're going to skip over to the pop-ups, Matt. Um, all right, I wanted to get into some little bit higher level stuff. Because I know this is always a big topic of clarinet when you have to go what we call over the break. Um, and on clarinet, what that means is that when you get to this A, you have one more note above that, and then you have to start over with all of your fingers back down again. However, you also need to use what we call on clarinet is a register key, because that pops it up from a low note up to a high note. Now, before you can actually play songs that go back and forth across that break, so before you can learn to actually pass it, you've got to be able to get those notes to sound. So that's why it's my last few minutes for today. Okay, and we are going to start this. We're going to actually work our way down. So we have two fingers in our right hand. So we're putting our C. Three fingers in the left, we're going to add two fingers in the right. Make sure the holes are covered completely. And let's go, this is low A, so let's just try that. There's a lot of air, make sure it's nice and strong. Mm -hmm. And one thing you can check, you can really, you probably can't see it in camera, but you can check your fingers. Do you have, I have a friend that calls them clarinet bolts. If you're pressing hard enough, on your holes, you, those holes will actually be indentations on your fingers. And you don't need to give your clarinet the death grip, but you do need to make sure that you see a full circle. See only half a circle that tells you that your fingers are off to one side um, or another. So we're going to go from this low A, and we're going to pop it up with our register key. Now when you hit the register key, here's another thing. You have to make sure that this thumb hole stays covered. Okay, so just the tip pops it up. And you don't have to open all the way necessarily either. All you have to do is vent or open it slightly and that'll get you your higher notes. So we're gonna go from low A up to high, it's high E. And that's going on our screen for us. Two, here we go, low A.
Okay. All right, good. Let's keep on going, you guys. Going back to our A. And again, you know, if you're watching this on YouTube later, back this up. Keep doing these over and over. And one, two, here we go on A. sure to come back every Tuesday and Thursday throughout the whole summer uh, for High Music Live, uh, where we'll have different teachers coming in to teach cool uh, techniques. So thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you on Thursday. All right. Take care, everybody.